Today we're going to talk about arrays in the Pascal programming language. Now, what is an array? Now, an array is is a is like a variable, but it's a special type of variable, special in that it can hold multiple values, but they must be of the same data type. So, if usually if I have an array, well, sorry, if I have a variable and I place a value inside of it, fine. My variable is called num, right? I can I could I could only put one value inside of it. If I want to put six, then six five will be removed, sorry, and six will be placed inside of it. Now with an array, an array, you could say this is a graphical representation of how an array is set up. Right? So we have an array, and we're going to call this array numbers. This is the name of the entire thing. Now I'm going to put 5, 6, 20, 9, and 10. Now this array has 5 values inside of it. Now every location inside of the array has its own index. Now the index is placed inside of a square bracket. Now something you need to keep in mind is that an array can hold multiple values, meaning more than one because we have five values here. However, they must be the same data type. Data type must be the same. So I can have an array of integers, and an array of characters, an array of real numbers, etc. But everything in the array must be of the same data type. So keep that in mind. Now, if the entire array is called numbers, how would the computer know where to put certain values? Now this is where the index comes in. The index is attached to the name of the array in square brackets so the, so that you can put so that you can point to a particular location inside of that array now this is location number one so this is this location is called numbers because that's the name of the entire thing and in square brackets we put one meaning position number one inside of this array this will be position number two so this would be named numbers which are number two this will be three four and five now an array when you are declaring an array you must know the size and you must know the data type now the size of an array is simply how much items it can hold so the size of this array is five because it can hold five values to declare an array in Pascal, this is how you would do it. You write the keyword var because we are declaring a variable actually. The name, which is numbers, this is the name of my array. Numbers, followed by a colon, followed by the, the word array, which is compulsory. Square bracket, open square bracket, one. Then I put two dots. 5 because that is size. If I wanted it to be 20 numbers, then instead of 5, I put 20. If I wanted 100, I put 100 here. Alright, so this is what we use to manipulate the size of the array. Off, and then we put the data type. Now all these are integers. So I write integers. Sorry, no S. Semicolon. And this will declare an array called numbers. It will hold five values, and they must all be integers. This is this is this is how you would do. It. This is the syntax. All right. Now, how would you place values inside of the array in Pascal? Now you can do it by saying exactly what you want to put inside of each location. I will show you how to do that. 
And another thing we see often is persons using loops to manipulate arrays. Now I'm going to show you both ways below here. Now I'm not going to go to the full five, but you will get the gist of what's happening. So to place five in location one, this is how it's done. The name of the array, numbers, open square bracket, location number one, what do I want to put inside of it? According to my graphical representation of an array, I want to put five in the first location. So, colon, equal, this is my assignment operator in Pascal, five, and semicolon, and with a semicolon. Numbers, location number two, what do I put? I put six. So assignment operator, colon, and then the equal sign, put six, then semicolon. And you'll repeat until you get to five. So three, four, five. So that's how you would do it. That's how you place that's how you place a value inside of an array. You must specify the location where you want to put it. You can't just put numbers because the computer would not know which location in the array you want to put the value. Right? So you must specify that. Now let's talk about how we can use for loops to manipulate arrays. Now when we looked at loops earlier, I said that we have a for loop which is a bounded or definite loop meaning you know how much times the loop is going to be executed or how much time is going to run now with an array we already know how much items the array can hold so if we know how much items the array can hold and we can manipulate how much time a particular loop can run then we can combine them so we can use a for loop to manipulate an array and I'm going to show you how we can do this so we have for i a variable called i it has signed the value of 1 2 5 because that is size of my array do sorry numbers And in square bracket, you will put an integer value to represent the location in the area. However, I'm going to put i instead of the actual integer value because i is going to change as the loop executes. You will see what I'm talking about. Assignment operator, and let's put zero. So I want every location in my array to have the value zero. Now let me show you what is happening. Now remember for a for loop, we have a counting variable. This is our count. So our counter. This is going to count for us how much time the loop is executed. Now what is happening here? The first time this loop runs, i is assigned the value of 1. So the first time, when the computer checks it, it is actually seeing 1 here, which is the first location inside of the array. And inside the first location of the array, array, sorry, we put zero. Then it goes back to the top, and then i increments, and it becomes two. So now i is going to put zero in the second position inside of the array. Then it goes back up, i changes to three, then zero is placed inside of the third location inside of the array. So I is changing so that the zero can be placed in every location. It will do this until it gets to five, and after it gets to five, it will stop. That is how you manipulate it. Now, for printing or displaying the elements of an array, this can be very useful as well. Let me show you. Now, let's go back to this array here. Let's say I want to print all the elements of my array. This is what you can do. Write line, put on a new line, open bracket, 
you put the name of the array numbers open square bracket I place the variable name I then I end the command so when this loop is executed I gets one so it's going to print to the screen or write to the screen on a new line the value inside location number one of the array then it goes back up for the second iteration i becomes two then this will become two so it will change it will print the value inside of the second location so then it will print six then it will go back i change to three it will print to the screen the location the value stored in location three which will be 20 and it will go up until it gets to location number five and then what you will see on the screen is five six twenty nine and ten now i wrote a simple pascal code that will do something like this i'm going to bring it up now so here we have it now i have here program remember this word is compulsory the name of my program is arrays it's my program header followed by the semicolon keyword var we use it for variable declarations i declare a variable called i which is integer and i have my variable my array declaration sorry so my variable name is numbers the size is five the size of the array is five and they will hold integer values then i begin i is given the value one to five then i will ask for a number when i accept that number i will put it inside of my array now pay attention you know they have i instead of the actual number one because i is going to change and it's going to manipulate the array another thing you pay attention to notice i have a begin and an end here because i have multiple statements inside of my for loop whenever you have a compound statement you must put begin and end but you end with a semicolon and not a full stop you end with a full stop meaning you have finished everything but with a semicolon it means that i finished my for loop then after the loop is finished i will print back to the screen the numbers that i entered instead of theory so let me compile compile is successful so there are no errors so now it's time to run so it asks me to enter a number it enter five comes back again enter a number eight twenty nine ten then it says you enter the following number 5, 8, 20, 9, and 10. So it is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So this is what this last line is doing here. Remember, write LN would print on a new line.